sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, last year, I spoke about the Formica Swarm Robotics Research Platform, which uh, I've been developing with four friends. Um, and this year, I'm going to tell you the developments we've made over the, over the last 12 months. Uh, firstly, uh, we didn't do very much. And then a community developed all on its own, which totally uh, shocked us. So, uh, awesome. Um, Leela Fish, particularly at uh, MUSI3, uh, MUSI rather, has been uh, very active. And uh, she's actually beaten us to it. She's developed a kit and is selling it today uh, of the first version of the robot. Uh, Toshan from uh, Antwerp University uh, has also taken our idea and uh, changed some things and uh, he's using it in a research project. Um, swarm robotics research is a, a pretty big area and it's kind of rare to do it with uh, real hardware and so that's why our project stands out and it's very cheap to get a very large swarm. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the features of the robot. Uh, so obviously the most exciting one is that it drives around, uses two tiny motors from mobile phones with two tiny rubber wheels, uh, three millimeters. Uh, it can sense its environment somewhat, so it has uh, ambient light sensing, it can drive towards light or away from light. Uh, and it has a floor sensor to look at the ground to see what color the ground is. So you can uh, have some behavior centered around that. They can charge themselves up by driving into a powered rail. So if you have a swarm of 50 robots, uh, you don't have to go around connecting chargers to each one. They just do it on their own when they're hungry. They can talk to each other over infrared. Um, they can download new firmware uh, across infrared as well, uh, reprogram other members of the swarm. And uh, if, one version's, if, if one guy is version 2 and he drives off and meets someone that's version 6, he says, oh, hi, uh, higher version, transfer it over and uh, bring the whole swarm up to speed without you having to go through each one. It's all about scalability. Uh, so all the pictures you've seen so far were version one, um, and it wasn't so easy for people to just uh, start hacking on it immediately. So we've been adding a few features to make life easier. Um, we've added googly eyes first to give you motivation. Uh, a hack header on top, the blue part, uh, so you can make backpack PCBs with extra functionality and clip those on top. Uh, you can plug it into the standard Texas Instruments MSP430 development USB stick called the EZ430, which is 16 euros, so it's really easy to get the programming going. Uh, and the best part is you can now finally buy kits. We've, been, we've spent all year uh, trying to get them together, uh, and we're not actually shipping them yet, but you can pre-order them so that we don't sell out of the initial bunch. Uh, and we'll, we, we guarantee we'll ship them by the 22nd of February, um, but hopefully it'll be a bit earlier than that. They're 30 euros for one robot, and all of the surface mount assembly is done for you. You just have to uh, solder on the motors and a battery, and everything's fairly straightforward. So uh, if you haven't done any soldering before, with the online resources we've got to help you through that, uh, you can still get involved. Uh, it's also a great way just to get into microcontrollers and particularly MSP430s. And that's pretty much it. I've just got three videos to show you very quickly, or two. Um, bear with me one second. So this is just a demonstration of the uh, communication. This is the very first uh, code we had on these things, basically, and it simulates a viral infection. So this guy in red, he has the virus, and he passes it on over infrared, and it takes over the swarm. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, some of them don't catch it, because in the early days, the CRC checks and the uh, communication weren't quite right, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, evolution in action. Okay, so this shows off a bit more complex behavior. Uh, I'd like you to look at this guy in particular, I think. He, uh, where is it? Yeah, he drives up, he's got a bit of food, and he pushes it towards the light, and then he backs off. So uh, this is a, a scenario where there's these little food tokens dotted about, and the robots can see them with their floor-looking sensor. Uh, when they find one, they drive towards the light source and leave them there. And then uh, they drive away from the light source when they're low on battery power. And at the bottom, there's a big row where they can charge up at the end of the day. And uh, finally, this is just a little cute video at uh, eye levels. You can see what it's like to 
to meet one of these things face to face. They're, I think you've probably got an idea of the scale, but they're 25 by 25 millimeters and about 15 millimeters high, something like that. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jeff. Great talk.